What up, fam? I am Dr. Day Luna, and you are listening to Drop It Like It's Doc podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about going gluten free because some of you have been told that you should go gluten free. Some of you just don't feel well when you eat gluten, and it might feel overwhelming to embark on this journey, but I've been on it for a while. So I'm here to get nerdy, explain to you why you should do it and how to do it. So fam, gluten, the sticky molecule found in wheat, barley, rye, maybe causing you issues. And first of all, I'm not saying that all of you have celiac disease. There's a very different approach to someone that has celiac disease versus something called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So first I'm going to talk to you about how you would even figure that out, but also both of those, your body really hates gluten. So that's just the bottom line. So the end point is going to be pretty similar there. Celiac disease is kind of severe in that it's a genetic issue. It is an autoimmune disease. It has the word disease in it. So what happens is that for these individuals that are usually genetically susceptible is that when they are exposed to gluten, what happens is that their immune system goes into overdrive and it targets certain cells in the body, predominantly in the gut, but also in the thyroid and also in the brain. I'll get into that in a little bit, but predominantly celiac disease is in the gut. It's in the small intestine. Your immune system then sees this gluten molecule. It makes antibodies against it. And then it targets the cells in the small intestine along the villi, which are these little finger like projections of the small intestine where a lot of absorption takes place. And when that targeting happens, there's a lot of tissue destruction with that tissue destruction. These individuals have a lot of issues digesting, absorbing their food. So it can be quite severe, especially when it's found in a younger population, because these individuals may have issues gaining weight. They may have failure to thrive. They may have issues just growing in general. And you know, as I say these things out loud, I literally did not grow from maybe age like six to age like 12. I'm literally not kidding. I remember going to the doctor every year and they're like, Ashley's shoe size is the same. Is she gonna grow? Who knows? So maybe, maybe I'm talking about myself here. Anywho, celiac disease is an actual disease process. You are having an autoimmune reaction. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is a little different. Your body is still getting inflamed by gluten. A lot of the inflammation is happening in those same areas, your small intestine, absolutely your brain as well, but you might not have the full blown autoimmune component. And autoimmune disease is something that we're kind of learning a lot more about at this stage of our evolution. And it's where your immune system is overactive. You lose tolerance to certain things. You lose tolerance to the food that is gluten. So to differentiate, you could do some testing. First off, I love that so many of you are asking your doctors to test you for this, or even you're not asking. And some of your doctors are like, huh, Billy's been bloated for the last seven years. Let's see if he reacts to gluten. This actually happened to me this week with the patient. He came in and he's like, yep, nope, don't react to gluten. And he actually only had one antibody run. So I'll start there. The way that you diagnose celiac disease, there's a few different approaches, but the first is through antibody testing. Because remember, that's what an autoimmune reaction is. There's four antibodies that you would need to test to completely rule that out. This sweet man, his doctor tried. I will give her that, but she only tested one of the four. So for me, not enough to determine if he did not have celiac or was not sensitive to gluten. Second test that you could have is genetic testing. These are called HLA DQ2 and DQ8. They are human leukocyte antigens. So these are things that sit on the tip of white blood cells. Your white blood cells are your army of your body, but they're also what's responsible for reactions, immune reactions, whether those are against a virus, bacteria, or whether those are against something like a food. So people that have HLA DQ2 or DQ8 positive, you have a genetic susceptibility for your body to just not love gluten. If you have one of those genes, not great. If you have both double whammy, you definitely want to stay away from gluten. So both of those are two blood tests. And then typically the gold standard because we love the gold standards by the American Medical Association, um, is to take a biopsy, to snip out a little bit of your gut and to see if it shows up in that way. 
Never have I ever had that happen to this tummy. Never have I ever referred a patient for that because you can definitely learn from either the antibody levels, again, there's four of them, or that genetic test if gluten is your friend or is not your friend. So celiac disease is, like I said, quite significant because you are having this autoimmune reaction. You are unable to digest and absorb your food. So some things that you would find or some things that you could suspect that may be pointing to this are things like gut issues, right? Like no shit, that goes without saying. Constipation, diarrhea, bloating, and not only diarrhea, the stool is usually off. Like it could be frothy, it could be weird colors, it could be sticky, it could just smell absolutely terrible. And that is usually because of malabsorption because those nutrients are not being absorbed, broken down into the system appropriately via the small intestine. It can also cause a lot of changes mental health wise. Because if you're not absorbing your vitamins and minerals, celiac disease can cause a lot of depression. There's actually studies that show that it's directly related to things like ADHD, bipolar disease, autism, things that really are critical on a healthy, happy nervous system that can definitely show up in celiac disease. So not everyone has the gut being the loudest part. Some people has though, have those antibody levels elevated in the brain. So it can lead to things like dizziness, car sickness. It could lead to changes in teeth enamel because that's really determined on your vitamin and mineral status. It can also lead to a whole slew of systems outside of the body, just chronic inflammation. So maybe for you that's joint pain, maybe that's rashes, that's huge with celiac disease. You get something, like this red bumpy rash. Um, it could also lead to just sleep disturbances. It can lead to an array of symptoms, but gut is huge. And usually these people don't look well, they don't feel well. And it's pretty obvious to them, or at some point it becomes obvious that it might be gluten. However, think about it. What do you eat when you're little? What did I eat when I was little? Pop tarts, peanut butter and jelly, fish sticks. I'm not kidding. I loved fish sticks. It's ridiculous. Pizza bites, pizza, bagels. Ah, a kid's favorite food, grilled cheese. Anyway, sometimes so, you know, maybe it's not that easy to pick up because they're eating these foods all the time. But in general, usually the kids aren't doing well. I'm actually sitting here giggling to myself because I said fish sticks, but also giggling because I think when I was little, I had like full blown celiac now that I'm looking back at it. I was unwell. Like I'll show you pictures of me any day, any time that you want. Clearly I have plumped. It's actually because I'm pregnant. We're gonna talk about that soon though. But in case you didn't know, this is baby in you. So if you have non-celiac gluten sensitivity, it might not be that severe, but what can happen is that you just have chronic gut issues. You are bloated all the time. You wanna have brain fog because that inflammation in your gut will then influence inflammation in your brain. You may have issues with rashes just in general. For me, when I eat out and if there's been cross-contamination, I get an itchy elbow. I'll literally just be sitting at the table, itching my elbow and I'm like, fuck, they got me. There's a certain restaurant that I used to frequent all the time. Yes, I did. I loved this restaurant. The manager even knew that I was gluten-free because I have no problem sharing this with people, that I am gluten-free because I feel way better without it. And because I share everything with you, I have that genetic variant. I have HLA DQ2 positive. I don't have any of the antibodies elevated. I did not have, ever have a biopsy done of my gut, but I have that genetic variant. So once I learned that, I cut it fully out and my life changed. I'll talk about what that looks like. But for now, I'm talking shit about this restaurant that I used to go to all the time um, because one of the places that gluten is hidden is actually in soy sauce. Por qué? Why? Why would soy sauce, the sauce of the soy, have gluten in it? They, <laughs> if I produced her laugh, I love it. Because they add gluten to things to make it sticky. <laughs> so I would always go to this restaurant. Even the manager would know that I am gluten free. They would not bring me the sauce of the soy. They would bring me tamari. They would, right when I sat down, I kid you not, they would bring me Tamari. I'm like, bless your soul, my queen. I appreciate you for the effort that you were putting forth to not having me have itchy elbow, brain fog, and maybe bloating. Okay. So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there with my partner. He ordered a salmon skin roll. And I was like, oh, there's probably no gluten in this. I asked my server and I go, can I eat this? She's not the manager, by the way. I said, can I eat this? She goes, 
Let me check with the sushi chef. She goes to the sushi chef. He goes, no, that cucumber is marinated in soy sauce, the salsa of the soy. And then I realize that the veggie roll, I don't eat just vegetables, but the veggie roll that I've been ordering for years had that same cucumber in it. So I made this face actually to the server and she's like, I'm so sorry. I told her I was deeply disturbed. That's the way that I described it. I went full New York, did not raise my voice. I said, I am deeply disturbed. The manager came out, he gave me some Wagyu just to try to like soothe my soul, but the damage had already been done. So yes, gluten is hidden in a lot of things. So we are gonna get into all of that. So for me, you know, who knows now that I think back to it when I was only eating gluten essentially and like American cheese. Yeah, my gut was a wreck. I did not gain weight. I was not well. Um, but then, you know, I didn't eat that much of it. And now the symptoms are much less mild. Itchy elbow, brain fog, bloating, things like that. And some people are like, oh, it's not that bad. That's not that bad. Like you just get a little itchy elbow. You should totally just eat gluten all the time. No, because if you know that gluten is causing chronic inflammation in your body, Inflammation is the cause of most chronic disease. It's the cause of most mental health concerns. It's the cause of most gut concerns. We know that all gut begins in the health. So if you can, all gut begins in the health, I said, all health begins in the gut. So if you are someone that knows that gluten is not your friend, why are you eating it? Probably because gluten has something called gluteomorphin in it, which is highly addictive. The morphin is a very similar molecule to morphine which just a few people in this country are addicted to. We love it here. So some people, when I tell them to go gluten-free because of their blood work, they're devastated. They are devastated. And I find a lot of signs and symptoms of individuals that need to go gluten-free on their blood work. Outside of what I just chatted about, the genetic and the antibody levels, I'll see very low levels of ferritin. Ferritin is a storage form of iron, which makes you function. We love iron. Gives us energy, brings some blood flow to the brain, helps us make dopamine. We want iron, but also low levels of vitamins and minerals across the board can show up. You can get signs on your nails, signs of malabsorption, like lines in your nails or spots on your nails, all sorts of things, but also just chronic inflammatory findings on blood work, like elevated inflammatory markers and things of that nature. And just evidence of low nutrient stores. So for a lot of individuals, I tell them to go gluten-free. They don't even know where to start. They are so overwhelmed and they almost get mad at me as if I am telling them something that is my fault. You know, just genetically, a lot of us have this and this is something I hear all the time as well. It's because of the glyphosate. If I just go to Europe, I'm going to be fine. Maybe? If you genetically have celiac disease, it's not because of the glyphosate. Glyphosate on our food, trust me, fam, trust me. I'm not a fan, not a fan. It's terrible for you. It does cause this genetic changing. It's so inflammatory to the body. But if you have this immune marker, this is reacting to the proteins in wheat, which does not change. It doesn't change if you eat einkorn, doesn't change if you eat sourdough bread, it doesn't change if you go to Italia, that's just something that you are going to have to grapple with. So I have convinced some of you because you know that you have HLA DQ2 or DQ8 positive to go gluten-free, or maybe you just feel better being gluten-free, or maybe you have an autoimmune disease or endometriosis or a chronic illness that is inflammatory in any nature, you would probably benefit from going gluten-free. Honestly, you would. Migraines also, I see really great benefit in going gluten-free, but now that I have maybe tickled your brain a little bit and you're thinking about going gluten-free, let's talk about how to do it. So first of all, I also have so many patients that are like, I'll be gluten-free, but then I go to Billy's house. I always use the name Billy. I have no fucking idea why. I don't even know a Billy. Go to Billy's house and his parents made dinner and I can't tell Billy's parents that I'm gluten-free, so I eat it. And then I'm bloated and sick for two weeks. Why? Why would you do that to yourself? But I mean, I guess not many people are outspoken like I am. And also let me just say that I ate Christmas dinner. I'm Jewish, by the way, which some of you love pointing out on social media. Yes, I am Jewish. Shabbat Shalom. It is Friday. But I would go to Christmas with my ex and I was literally, I would eat every Christmas dinner myself because I, they, they would eat lasagna. I don't know if that's like a thing that people do, lasagna and bread. 
What do those have? Gluten. I don't eat those. So I would bring my own meal every single time. So yes, I am aware that I am cut from a different cloth, but I think that you need to, first of all, tell people in your life that you're gluten-free so that when you are at events or when you are eating dinner somewhere or when you're going out with your friends, maybe they can consider that and go somewhere that has gluten-free options because gluten is really just found in anything that contains wheat or the salsa of the soya. So if you are going somewhere that has those things, it's really easy for you to choose something outside of that. But you need to be mindful that your server is not stupid like mine was because some of them get confused and they don't know that it's in soy sauce. I'm sorry that I called her stupid, but honestly, I'm pissed because I was literally going there for years. Anyway, they don't know that soy sauce has gluten in it. They usually know that it's in wheat and breading and sometimes they know this, it's in fried food because fried food most of the time is covered in breading and then it goes in a fryer that restaurants never change that oil. They never change that oil. So if it goes in there, there's going to be cross-contamination. Also, for people that are gluten sensitive, cross-contamination is an issue because I think most gluten-free products have, they can be under 30 parts per million of the gluten molecule, but some celiacs and people that are gluten sensitive react to just three parts per million. So think about it. You're, you're at a pizzeria and they have gluten-free pizza, but they're making it on the same table that they're making their actual gluten pizza. There's flour. That's what they use to, you know, just make it so that things don't stick together you're gonna get that cross-contamination. It's just going to happen. Also, if you live in a house with someone that eats gluten, and if you do not eat gluten, I would recommend that you have very different things that you're using to cook that gluten item on so that you don't get that cross-contamination. Truly, I know that I'm going a little bit in depth there, but it does matter. It really does matter. I don't allow gluten in the house. So sorry, my baby daddy, no gluten in the house. Love you so much. So outside of the obvious things, like pasta, bread, beer, gluten reduced beer still has gluten in it. It's just gluten reduced. Um, what else has it? Baked goods, anything baked goods, you know, anything made with wheat. Einkorn has wheat. It's just ancient. You don't want those on the menu. So then what do you want? What do you want? Tamari is just soy sauce. There's no gluten in it. And anything like rice, perfect. There's no, that's something that I get a lot. People think that rice has gluten, it does not. But it's another sneaky one, is oats. Because oats, while they're technically gluten-free, they're almost always cross-contaminated. So if you are eating oats, you need to make sure that they are certified gluten-free, that they are third-party tested to not have gluten in them. If you are someone that is reactive to gluten. And again, it's kind of obvious to you and it will change your life. It really will. For me, now when I get exposed to gluten, yes, I get an itchy elbow, I feel drunk. I literally feel drunk. Not only will I be itching myself when I get a little rash, only on my elbows, I'll start to slur my words. And not only am I pregnant, but even before I was pregnant, I did not drink. So it would be quite alarming to me when I would start to feel like my tongue was heavy in my mouth. It didn't really make sense to me. And then also I would get a little dizzy. So speaking of that, another like hidden sign that you might be gluten sensitive is actually car sickness and sea sickness because it's that's where it hits. Gluten will cause inflammation in the cerebellum and that's where your internal stability is. So not only do you get more unstable in balancing, you might get more clumsy, car sick, seasick, but you also might get more unstable mentally. So some people have these emotional outbursts or think about even kids, right? Like those clumsy kids that have low muscle tone and are just, you know, not doing well gut wise, eczema, rashes, things like that, it's probably gluten. So I went on a tangent there, but welcome to my brain. You know how my brain goes on tangents. So if you're going gluten-free, the best way to do that is to just A, not eat those foods that I just listed, but B, you're like, ugh, what am I going to eat? Everything else. You can eat meat. You can eat veggies. You can eat fruits. You can eat gluten-free grains, which are things like rice and you can get your, and quinoa, and you could get your carbs from things like sweet potatoes and potatoes. But I want you to be careful because all the gluten-free products, gluten-free does not equal healthy, okay? A lot of those foods, like the crackers and the tortillas, they are very processed. So if you look on the back of them, yeah, it might say gluten-free, but it might have about 17 different ingredients. The carbs might be exquisitely high and it's not going to necessarily do anything beneficial for your health. Yes, you won't be getting the inflammation from the gluten, but you might be getting the inflammation from the other things that they are putting in those products. So that is huge. 
If I was going gluten-free and if I didn't know where to start, I would really just start by getting all the gluten out of the house. <laughs> I would. Know that it could also be hidden in things like sauces and marinades, pre-made soups, pre-made spice packets. So this country is doing pretty decent at this point as far as labeling things as gluten-free. So if it doesn't say that on it and if it's in a package, it probably has gluten in it. I actually had a patient that got gluten from Twizzlers. She's like, I didn't know that Twizzlers had gluten. Of course, the poison has gluten, but of course it does. So look and see the package and if it says it or not. If not, get it out of the house. You're not tempted. Where I live in San Diego, I am blessed that there's gluten-free everything. If I want a gluten-free bagel, I can get one. If I want a gluten-free pizza, I can get one. There's restaurants that are even fully gluten-free here, so you can look them up before. There are amazing resources online to tell you when you're eating out what restaurants have separate kitchens, separate fryers, or just truly entirely gluten-free. And some of you might not even want to go to that depth, but know that it's really important that you're considering it when eating out so that you don't get glutened like I did. You can also just focus on whole foods. Your whole life is going to change when you do this if you are reactive to it. Remember, I started this whole thing by describing who's reactive to it and who's not. So I don't want you to think that I'm just telling you that everyone needs to go gluten-free, even though to be honest, I lightweight think that most people would do better not eating the gluten in this country because what we have done to it. So to recap, if you have celiac disease, you probably know, or you're suspecting it because you've been having diarrhea for most of your life and it's hard for you to gain weight and you just feel exquisitely unwell. You are exhausted. Your gut is a mess. And overall, you would probably have the genetics and antibodies elevated. Or maybe you had a little slice cut out of your, your abdomen, out of your gut to see those reactions on a microscopic level. But you can still be non-celiac gluten sensitive. You might have some antibodies mildly elevated. You might have the genetics, but still gluten is just not your friend. Sometimes the symptoms are in the gut, but sometimes they're all in the nervous system. You might have anxiety, depression, issues with sleeping, fatigue, inflammation in your joints, things like that. And then you're going to experiment what it would look like going gluten-free. I need to stress that you can't just be gluten-free for a week and think that you're gonna see a huge shift. You're gonna feel okay over that week, but this is a very sticky, sticky, sticky molecule. So I would recommend going gluten-free for, honestly, give it a go for like two, three months and see how you feel. You're going to feel better. And the fun thing about the immune system is that once you take something out of the body, the immune system lowers its overall inflammation, everything shifts. So then if you are exposed to the soya salsa, then you will notice symptoms right away, right away. Like me, itchy elbow, dizziness, super cool stuff. So be mindful that you're not just eating boatloads of sugar when you get these gluten-free products. Focus on whole foods, meat, veggies, whole grains that are not gluten containing. Rice is totally fine. Um, and tamari, we love tamari. Even things like coconut aminos, gluten-free, gluten-free. I'm trying to think if there's any other things that frequently come up with my patients where they get stuck on gluten. Oh, it can also be in your medications. Holy shit, I almost forgot to say that. If you are gluten-free or celiac, you need to make sure that your medications do not have gluten in them because they might, they really might. Ironically enough, a lot of people that have celiac also have Hashimoto's and guess what they put a lot of gluten in? Thyroid medication. We love it here, we love it. So if you have questions about glo going gluten-free, leave them in the comments below. I would love to teach you about some of the things that I eat being gluten-free, but truly I eat a lot of meat and veggies. That's my go-to. It really is. Please like this podcast, please subscribe to it, and please send this to someone who is curious about going gluten-free. I hope that this information helps you. Thank you for being here and say no to soy sauce.